Hello everybody, this is the BG, and today we're going to learn about how to make cabbage rolls. Like many of the foods on our website, there are many different variations of cabbage rolls around the world. What I'm going to discuss today is actually my grandmother's version of this recipe. This is purely a starting point. I am going over the mechanics of how to make a cabbage roll. You are free to change any of the ingredients, take things away, put things in. It's totally up to you. Here's what you'll need to make cabbage rolls. A stock pot and a saute pan a six quart Dutch oven for baking the rolls, a mixing bowl, a medium saucepan, a wire mesh strainer, a spice grinder, cutting board and knives, a rubber spatula, paring knives, fork, and measuring cup and spoon, a medium aluminum pan for holding the leaves, a pair of tongs, and a disher for portioning the meat mixture. For ingredients, you'll need what you see here, one pound of ground beef, one pound of ground pork, two eggs, one onion, one cup of rice, two teaspoons of salt, pepper to taste, one 25 ounce jar of sauerkraut, olive oil for sauteing the onions, two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes, a quarter cup brown sugar, and six bay leaves. The first step in making cabbage rolls is preparing all of the bricks that we need to make this cabbage roll house. So we're gonna start with how to prepare the sauerkraut, how to prepare the onions, how to prepare the rice, and how to prepare the cabbage. So the first step is to prepare the sauerkraut. And like anything else that we're cooking, the better all of your raw ingredients are, the better the overall product is going to be. This Bubby's brand is my favorite one to buy. I think it's the only one that actually tastes like traditionally made sauerkraut. But the only thing I need to do here is just empty it into a wire mesh strainer to drain it out and then press it a little bit just to get any of the excess juice out of it. The next step is to prepare the onion, doing a quarter inch to a three eighths inch dice. And then in a little bit, we're gonna be sauteing this. The next ingredient to prep is the cabbage head. What you wanna do is make sure that you're cutting a deep enough V that you're actually removing the connection of each one of the, the cabbage head leaves ribs to the core of the cabbage. The reason that I'm doing this is that as you put the cabbage in the boiling water to, to get the leaves cooked through part of the way, they will release off of the cabbage head if they've been cut through properly. And so this, I'm just gonna take the knife and just make a deep V or a deep cone into the cabbage head and then just jam a fork into it and that'll be the handle that you use to actually dip this into boiling water. The last specialty ingredient that I'm actually gonna prepare is the bay leaf. This is something that my grandmother actually never added to cabbage rolls. After doing all the sausage making that I've learned, bay leaves make everything taste better. The only difference is, is I don't put in whole bay leaves, I actually always grind my bay leaves. I hate picking out bay leaves from a finished product, whatever it is, a stew or the getta that we're gonna show later on in the year. And so I always grind it. The problem with bay leaves is that they just dance around in a spice grinder. So I have six bay leaves in here. I'm gonna add just a tablespoon of uh, steel cut oats, act as a, something to weigh them down to make them uh, grind easier. And that's it. It's just getting that into a dust and then you don't have to worry about picking out bay leaves. The first component that we're going to cook on the stove is the rice. For this, this is called parboiling, which means that you're partially cooking the rice. I don't wanna put raw rice into the mixture because it's gonna be a denser cabbage roll in the end. And so this makes sure that the rice can be fully cooked in the roll while keeping it a little lighter and fluffier on the inside of it. Since I have one cup of rice, I have about four cups of water in that pot. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of water, bring it to a boil, add in the rice, and then cook it for 10 minutes and strain it. That's it. The next ingredient to prepare on the stovetop are the onions. You technically do not need to cook the onions before adding them to the meat mixture, but by browning the onions beforehand, you're gonna be adding another layer of complexity to the overall flavor of the cabbage roll. So I do recommend sauteing the onions beforehand. The only thing you need to do here, just get a saute pan on the stovetop. I'm gonna turn it on high to start out with. Enough oil added to the bottom of the pan. Add in your onions. Once they start browning, you're gonna turn it down to a medium, and then you're just gonna get to a nice golden brown and then pull the pan off the stove. The last ingredient to be prepared on the stovetop is the cabbage. Now for this method, this is what I was taught from my grandmother. Since we have that giant fork stabbed into the core of the cabbage, 
you're simply going to bring a pot of water up to near boiling and then you can just slowly submerge the cabbage head into the water. The safest way to get the amount of water in that pot correct is actually to put the whole head of cabbage into the pot dry, fill it up with water to the amount that you need to actually cover it, and then that way you can put it on the stove and then you'll know that when you actually submerge the head of cabbage into the water, you're not going to have boiling water going overboard and all over the place. That definitely did not happen to me as I was learning how to do this in the beginning. But with that boiling water, and since I've cored out the inside of the cabbage, every time that a leaf is cooked enough, it'll actually just fall off the outer edge of the cabbage. The way to test to see that if it's cooked enough is to, is to take the leaf out of the water and let it cool down just a moment and then scrunch it up with your hand. If you can actually wad that cabbage leaf up in your hand without it cracking, it's cooked enough. That's always gonna be the test to make sure that you have the right amount of cooking done in that. But if you've cored the cabbage correctly so that you've severed the where the ribs connect to the center core of the cabbage, every time you remove a leaf, you'll actually start cooking the next layer down of leaves and then it itself will fall off. And it'll just keep happening over and over again. What I'm gonna be doing here is just going through and keep removing leaves until I get to about 12 of them. Every time I pull one off, I'm going to be checking it to see if it cracks, as it, if it gets wadded up. If it's good, you can just set it off to the pan to the side and let it cool down and then it'll be ready for stuffing. So anything left inside the core, don't worry about throwing that away. We're going to use that later on, so don't get rid of it. With all the ingredients prepped, we can actually now put the mixture together. So for this, it's going to be one pound of ground pork, one pound of ground beef, two eggs, one onion that's been sauteed, the one cup of rice that's been parboiled, two teaspoons of salt, pepper to taste, and then the six bay leaves ground up with the tablespoon of steel cut oats. Now just put on a glove, you wanna protect your hands and just mix and mix and mix until this gets completely consistent. As you can notice from the earlier part of the video, I don't need to use the entire head of cabbage. I'm only pulling off 12 to 14 leaves to actually make the cabbage rolls. So the center part of the cabbage is something I don't wanna waste. What I like to do is actually just chop it up and turn it into a bed on the bottom of the Dutch oven so I can put the cabbage rolls on top. Then on top of the chopped up cabbage, I'm going to add the sauerkraut mixture that I took out of the Bubby's bottle and then lay that on top of the cabbage. With everything prepped, let's set up the assembly line. So now I just have the cabbage leaves, the meat mixture, and then the Dutch oven ready to put the rolls into. So with my assembly line ready, let's get the last two pieces that we need, a two ounce scoop and then a paring knife. The first thing that you need to do to prepare the leaf is to remove the rib that's on the back side of the leaf. I just have it so that the cabbage leaf is cup side down, core side going towards your arm. Remove that rib, and then you'll flip the cabbage leaf back over again so it's cup side up having the core going back towards your arm. And then for this size leaf, I'm gonna put two scoops of the mixture in, and then you're just gonna fold it like a burrito. So get it so that everything is opened up all the way. Bring the two sides in, and then you're gonna roll that over into the front side of the leaf and make a nice little package. We're just gonna do this over and over and over again. If this is the first time you've ever made a cabbage roll, it is not going to be pretty the first time you roll it. Just give yourself some patience, try it over and over again. It's not like you're going to ruin any of this material. So just keep trying until you actually get a good looking burrito type package for your first cabbage roll. And then it's just going to be putting them into the Dutch oven, however that you want to fit them in.
The couple extra pieces of cabbage leaf that I have left over, I'm just gonna chop those up and then just put them on top of the prepared cabbage rolls and just have a little bit extra, you know, stewed cabbage along with your cabbage rolls. And now for the last step is getting the tomato sauce mixture ready to put over the cabbage rolls before you can put it in the oven. For this, you can use really anything. Uh, growing up, we actually used Campbell's tomato soup. You just add, you know, for every cup of condensed soup, you're gonna add one cup of water to it and you can just pour that over. The benefit of using uh, Campbell's is that it's already slightly sweetened, so you don't need to add the brown sugar in this situation. But to make this a little bit fancier, I got some good quality crushed tomatoes in a can, two cans of that, along with a quarter cup of brown sugar. After the brown sugar has been mixed into the crushed tomatoes, I'm just gonna pour that over the top. And then you can use your spatula to kind of like wiggle in between each one of the cabbage rolls to make sure that the tomato sauce is making its way down into the cracks of all the cabbage rolls. With everything put into the Dutch oven, just give it a little clean up if you've spilled any of the sauce. Put the lid on and, you know, ask your beautiful wife if she wants to play a little handsies with you before it goes into the oven. But that's it. This guy is ready to go in 350 degrees and we're gonna check it every hour. So after taking the Dutch oven out at the one hour mark, we're gonna take a look at the cabbage rolls to see how far along they're coming. Get a nice cabbage roll facial from the steam. But what we're looking for is to see if any of the fat is starting to render off of the cabbage rolls. For this, I don't see any fat pooling on the top, so these aren't finished yet. But it does make for a good time to get everything a little jostled around to get that tomato sauce readjusted and then into the cracks and also to fog up the camera. So let's get the lid back on and put this guy back into the oven at 350 degrees for another hour. So at the two hour mark, we'll take another look at the cabbage rolls to see how far along they are. And I like what I see here. The sauce will actually slightly yellow because that's coming from the, the fat is, is rendering off of the meat and actually coloring the tomato sauce at this point. It gives it a slight sheen on the top. And then the tomato sauce itself is, is since it's roasting down, it's gonna darken also. And so this looks wonderful. Everything is nice and soft when you actually look at the spatula you can see that there is fat you know coming off of this off of the meat mixture and so these are fully cooked looks perfect and we are ready to plate it is a delightful recipe this is the polish form you can modify it as you wish you wanted to make it a little spicier you could add some red pepper flake you could add garlic to it you could add other vegetables to it it's a, a canvas for you to add to so this is the bg keeping it square have fun make some cabbage rolls everybody i will see you next month Thanks for watching today. I know for some of you, you might still be thinking, I don't know, cabbage rolls. Maybe you've had a bad one before. We'll put those bad memories aside and trust me, this recipe won't let you down. They are phenomenal. Our next video is all for our gluten-free and dairy-free viewers. We'll show you how to make GFDF waffles. Yes, it can be done and they are fantastic. Subscribe to us, check out our website, and we'll see you next time on our final freezer. We don't want to cavitate. That's Very the problem. Good. We don't want to cavitate. That's what I want. You. Why won't you dissolve?